Hi and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and today I'm going to be having a go at painting these loose roses. I had such a great response from you all um, to my demo where I painted loose foxgloves and so many of you have asked me to carry on painting some loose flowers so I thought I'd just share my journey. I'm not a very experienced loose flower painter uh, I would like to be able to um, improve on my loose flower painting so I thought I'd bring you along on the journey and um, show you how I sort of tackle having a go at trying to get loose with these lovely roses. I'm not using a specific reference photograph today. I looked through P Pixabay to try to find one that I thought would be suitable and nothing really stood out. So what I've done is just drawn out a few generic rose shapes um, on my paper to get me started and I'll just work sort of fairly spontaneously um, with those shapes and see what happens. So pause the video here if you want to copy some of my loose shapes to give yourself a good starting point or use any photograph, any reference um, or roses from your garden. Um, you know, that would be fantastic to paint from real roses. So I'm using Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper, 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. It's taped to my board and my board's um, at an angle of about 45 degrees so gravity will help me to paint. I'm going to use the wet in wet method to keep me nice and loose so I get some nice washy washes going and get some lovely soft blends of colours. Um, to keep things really, really loose. So I'm painting sort of roughly around my flowers, leaving some areas dry, um, wetting most of the page. I think you can see the darker areas where the page is wet. Um, and then I'll go in with some colour and sort of build up a background and then put in some opera rose for the roses. Uh, that's my plan anyway. It's obviously subject to change because this is an experiment. So um, we shall see how it goes. So I'm starting off with my uh, Princeton Aqua Elite one and a half inch Mottler brush, or you could use a Harky brush or any large flat brush. I'm putting in indigo and perylene green and a bit of sap green as well mixed in into it. And I'm sort of beginning to build up a bit of a background. I want my paint to be reasonably well pigmented, but not too dark at this stage. It looks a lot darker at the moment than it will look when it dries, but I'm just sort of building up this sort of background for my roses. I'm gonna try and leave areas to drop in some pink in a moment. Um, so it softly diffuses into this background. So I get some lost and found edges. But first, I want to build this sort of background up, keeping it darker, bottom left, slightly lighter across the top. Now, this is um, my Opera Rose, and I'm using um, a size 14 um, Escoda Ultimo synthetic mop brush. You can see how the pink is, is just diffusing and blending gently with the background colours. This is just roughly going over where my rose shapes were penciled in. Maybe just a few extra little bits and bobs here and there. And then dipping into a richer mix of opera rose and just adding in some darker colours which you can see again are softening and diffusing, keeping everything lovely and soft at the moment. And then continuing across the base with the same colours using a slightly drier, richer mix just to keep it there so it doesn't run quite so much and that will give me those darker tones, um, the start of my darker tones across the bottom. Just 
darkening up across the left side. So it's sort of top right um, where I'm going to be keeping the light. And then just to get some pretty little patterns and marks using um, a fan brush to flick in or spatter in some opera rose across the painting um, just to increase the texture. I've now laid my board flat because I don't want gravity to cause the paint to wash and run down the painting. Um, everything's wet, it's still going to soften and diffuse, uh, but with my painting flat I can now focus on getting just a few more slightly more defined marks into the paper. So I'm using my Ultimo synthetic mop brush with perylene green and sap green of varying strengths um, to just flick in some leaf shapes here and there. Some of these look a bit dark, but I shall just um, dab those out in a little bit. But they will all soften and diffuse. And these colours actually dry back quite a lot more um, light than they look at the moment. So just dabbing out a little bit where they were looking a little bit too strong, then um, coming back in with this brighter, warmer sap green to vary up um, the impression of these leaves, still working wet in wet, um, so that these leaf shapes too will soften, diffuse and lighten up. But hopefully it will all add up to um, give the loose impression of these beautiful roses, stems and leaves. This is my um, sword liner. It's a pro art size small sword liner and that's given me some really nice stem shapes. And then I can scrape out or lift out some shapes using my palette knife, just scratching through the rich paint to reveal the white paper underneath. And this just gives me a few more um, little loose impressions and suggestions of leaves, stems, that sort of thing. Then a little bit more spattering of the opera rose here and there. And some of these marks will stay a little bit firmer as the paper is that much drier. So there'll be less softening and diffusing. But hopefully it's still going to give me that variation in hue and texture. And now I've moved on to a slightly smaller brush for some smaller leaf shapes. This is a Da Vinci Spin size 2, um, a synthetic mop. I'm still using this brighter sort of sap green heavy mix. A little bit of the other colours, the indigo and the perylene green in it here and there. And I'm just building up a few of these smaller leaves. Still wet in wet, but not quite as, as wet as it was before. Um, and then still working on just putting in leaf shapes, stem shapes, working around these roses spontaneously, um, trying to see where I think the picture needs just a little bit more detail, but also trying hard not to overwork it because I think I've nearly finished this stage. So back with my palette knife and I'm just putting in a vein through these leaves. You can see where I'm scraping through the rich paint and revealing, <clears throat> excuse me, a little white highlight that suggests a little bit more detail on the leaves. And I think that's me done for this first stage. So I'm going to leave it to dry completely, then come back and just put a few tiny details in to bring the roses together a little bit more. So here it is, um, it's dried really nicely and now I need to just get a bit more tone um, and detail into the roses but I'm going to try to put the minimum amount of detail possible. I'm using an Escoda Perla size 14 round brush, it's got a really nice point and this is a mixture of um, my opera rose but I've added some neutral tint to it to darken it down and I'm working around a few of the petals uh, putting in 
some shadows and shape just to bring some form to these roses. I don't want to paint the roses in an over detailed way. Um, I want to just put in just enough shadow and crisper, harder edged marks in order to suggest the roses. Um, I can dip back into a bit more of my opera rose to lighten it up. Um, I can smudge and soften some of the edges, but the idea is just to work around these petals, um, keeping these areas that are nice and dark and using these to define the layers of petals without overtly painting them in. If you need to soften any edges, then clean your brush out and then um, dry it on a paper towel till it's only damp and then smudge it on the edge that you want to uh, soften like I did just there. And you'll end up with this lovely mixture of soft and hard edges, which really suggest the roses very nicely. And now using the same mixture of opera rose and neutral tint, and the same brush to get in some rosebuds. So I'm just going over the marks where my rosebuds were and just strengthening up the shadows around them a little bit more. And then back to my darker mixture of indigo perylene green to put in the sort of sepals around the base of the buds and the, the roses. Just a few sort of darker hints of leaves and stems. And then pulling down some darker stems here and there, not worrying whether they actually join to anything. It's just keeping that kind of fresh dynamic line um, that's been quite quickly painted in to give that sort of suggestion um, and that looseness. I think I'd rather a line was slightly in the wrong place and was loose and fresh than had been painted very slowly and that was kind of a bit sort of wobbly and unsure looking. So now getting in some darker leaves, putting it around the base of that rose, some tone so that that helps to bring that, that one forward, connecting the leaves to stems And then putting the veins in with the palette knife, again, giving me that lovely fresh mark. Maybe just use the palette knife to scrape out a highlight on the, the leading rose petal. And just maybe a little bit more softening back. And then back to my um, Opera Rose and Neutral Tint colour and just get a bit of um, definition to this rose here. This rose is a bit further in the background, so I don't want too much detail. And so in the final stages of this painting, it's a sort of a bit of a balancing act between trying to get enough dark tones in to make sure that the the roses and leaves are convincing um, that they've got enough depth and shadow but without overdoing it um, so as I put in my darks I go back in with my palette knife and um, scrape through them for leaves and um, leaf veins things like that maybe sort of darken up on either side of some of the flowers, like that little rose there. Um, so it looks like there's a leaf coming out from behind that petal. And then I can just dab back if anything's a little bit too dark, but also dabbing back gives me texture as well. And now flicking some really nice 
quite large drops of spatter onto the painting. And because it's going onto the dry painting, I'll get that beautiful spatter effect that really works so well for loose flowers. And I can, um, as well as some opera rose, I can also spatter in a little bit of dark perylene green mixed with indigo um, around the base. And that will just introduce um, a slightly sort of darker note to that part of the painting. And then I think um, for a final touch, just a few more of these sap green leaves dotted around the darker leaves and then I'll put some up into the lighter area at the top of the painting. Trying to keep them looking sort of fairly random but still as if they're attached to stems. So it's just a flick of the brush with my Da Vinci spin. And then I can use the tissue to gently tap on those damp leaves. And you can see that that's pushing them back into the background, giving them a sort of a slightly mottled, um, loose appearance. And that's the painting finished. Um, I'm going to remove the um, tape now and have a look at it and see how it looks with a clean white border. And um, as an experiment goes, I'm fairly pleased with this. It's certainly not perfect and it isn't what I had in my head, which of course as we paint we always have a really strong idea of something that we'd like to end up painting. Um, and I'm nowhere near there, um, as I am sort of still a beginner with loose flowers. But I'm really happy with this painting because I think I've learned an awful lot. I've learned a lot about what is sort of working for me with this technique, but I'm also learning what isn't working. And I think some of my shapes aren't great. I think I could have left it even looser than I did. And I haven't quite worked out how to get the shading into my roses to get them really, really effective. But I think adding a few more darks now has worked a little bit better. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, maybe just spatter in a little bit of white gouache. Just for some tiny highlights. Again, using the fan brush. And I'm going to call that finished. Well, I hope you enjoyed um, watching um, the way I experiment and that you hopefully give you the confidence to have a go yourself. I think the point with this sort of experiment is, is don't be too worried if you don't end up with a finished painting, if it ends up going a bit wrong. You will learn from that and that's really important. Um, I've sort of shied away from painting loose flowers and wish that I could paint them, uh, but the only way to learn to paint them is to actually forge in, make the mistakes, put in the painting miles with the flowers, and that's what I intend to do this year. But I'll be back to landscapes on Saturday, uh, but I will be trying to do more flowers, and they will probably mostly be on Wednesdays with the landscapes um, coming on Saturdays, as usual. I hope you found that helpful. Um, please um, leave us a like and please consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. It's free to do and it really helps us with our reach on YouTube. Um, and thank you so much to our wonderful patrons who support us on Patreon. Um, and we'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.